Hello everybody, welcome to the Rebel Roundup. We've got G-Man Division 4, day one of the season, and we've got my favourites for the division, Hindi, Lounging Lizards, Lizardman Team, versus Puppies Orc Team, Orcs of Letters. Let's get straight into it. Wow, so Hindi won the toss and chose to, chose to kick, and he's got a blitz. Um... This could have actually been set up better against a blitz as well. It's a little bit weak to a blitz, um, and it's a, it's a good kick. Although, of course, a short kick would have been good, but um, a deep kick is still makes it trouble for him with his, his crappy movement five guy to go and get the ball. Um, can have a look at the teams. I've got a strength five Saurus, tackle mighty blow Saurus. hard today. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. So um, <laughs> got loads of block, loads of guard on the Saurus and the Crocs. Um, it's a really, really unbelievable team. Uh, no reserves though, so that could be interesting. And the Orcs, you know I put these two as the two favourites, but really the Orcs are completely underwhelming in comparison. <laughs> They've got some guard and some strength, but um, oh yeah, strength palmer is good, but still they look pretty outclassed by the Lizards here. Oh, maybe he's just don't dodge, just punch. He can still punch, can't he? He's got plenty of time. He can three dice this one. Punch him. He's under no... It'd be silly to dodge. It's ludicrous to dodge. I've just I've just realised. He can just punch him. <laughs> he was literally punch him because he's strength five and, and he's invincible. <laughs> so it's pretty good being strength five sometimes, isn't it? Alright, so... Turn three and Hindi's still putting pressure on. Oh, he's managed to break tackle around to get a two dice block. And a KO. Oh. Okay, it wasn't because he's armor eight, but it could have been because he was armor eight. <laughs> so yeah, maybe maybe uh maybe Puppy played a bit too loose there, relying on the strength five. But um you know, dodge break tackle. I mean, I would only take break tackle in a dodge player, so I can uh, I can see it's good. Okay, so turn four again. He blitzes with a uh, dodge break tackle, looking for a scatter, I guess. No, he's going to risk the four plus pickup. I guess there they could. There's some of the scatters could have been really bad for him. I mean, the re the reroll's fair, isn't it? Because it does get him away and almost in the clear. Well, this sucks, doesn't it? He's done it! Oh my god, it's tackle as well, so he gets him. Unbelievable. Maybe he should have made the second GFI, yeah? Maybe. Maybe he should have made that second GFI. I mean, I know he had no rerolls, but he, he made one GFI. Maybe he should have gone for the, the second. But still, he's got another chance to, to get the ball here. Oh, double one. He doesn't get to, he doesn't get to pick up the ball. Wow, he might actually recover then, eh? He might recover from this, but I doubt he's going to score himself. Um, this movement six line or is his best chance to score. Hard to free him up. He's just got to dodge away, hasn't he, to get freed up? And he's still got to do all of the securing the ball as well. Oh, he's got he's got this blitzer. Fair enough. the GFIs. That puts him in range with four GFIs. I quite like that. Gives him options. Not sure I like that GFI so much. But I guess it, it does kind of screen off everything. Wow, he goes for the one dice blitz to uh Get a get a crocs on the ball. I mean, basing the ball with a crocs is about the best thing you can do. Yeah, break tackle there would have, if he was if he was here, he could have just two plus around. So yeah, fair enough. How'd you get rid of this? Just four plus dodge pass to him. He can blitz and then he dodges away and passes it to him. I guess that's the only 
the only player there is. I mean, you really want to have the reroll for the dodge maze because the dodge makes the four plus dodge. One GFI to get oh, no, two GFIs to get into range. And still with two rerolls. No, he only had one reroll left. Use the last one. <gasps> Fails the catch. Oh man, it's pretty unfortunate. I like basing basing up the crocs first to stop to stop the crocs just double GFIing back to base the ball again. Um, but yeah, he can block block this Saurus free, can't he? For two D on the on the scoring threat. wasn't the blitz. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. I, uh, I don't understand not blitzing the guy who could score. The one guy who could score. I would, I would have blitzed him. But, you know, maybe he wanted to level up his... No, his Crocs goes just leveled. I don't, I don't get that. One, two, three, four, five, six. It, was, it didn't need a GFI. It was, it was here, wasn't it? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, no, it was a GFI. It did have a reroll. Okay, yeah, it didn't have a reroll. Yeah. Hmm. I think it's a weak. I think it's a weak player, though. Not doing the blitz. But yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I didn't realize it was a GFI. Okay. Okay. Well, base basing worked out. Yeah, yeah. With a GFI, with with a reroll, you make the hit all day, don't you? But I guess he didn't have the he didn't have the reroll. So fair enough. Oh man, inaccurate pass. Nearly found it. It did find him, but he failed the catch. <laughs> that would have been that would have been pretty crazy. So there you go. Half time, nil nil. I mean, the blitz was absolutely massive, wasn't it? Under constant pressure, the Orcs. I mean. You're always under pressure anyway against Lizardmen, but uh, just couldn't get anything going after that blitz. And yeah, let let the hit on the orc throw, which was which was brutally punished. This is getting slow. That could be crucial because he was quite he was quite liberal with his rerolls in the in the first half. Been brutal, isn't it? I mean, they they've had no real problems on their drive, the lizards. Yet. Three men down. And just so much faster, aren't they, than the, uh, than the Orcs, especially with his break tackle. Uh, you know, he, have, he's, he's at the TV, I mean, ridiculously, ridiculously after about 20 games, he's at the kind of TV where he's got a few break tackle, which is, uh, you know, a TV level I've never got to with Lizards. I've never needed uh, to get break tackle. You know, early. I, I don't like it early, but um, you take it late, and it, it does give them an extra dimension. I guess he's just going for the three plus three plus to score. Oh, it's just one. Just one three plus to score. Fair enough. Fair enough. So uh, lizards go one nil off, but the orcs have got a chance to equalise, haven't they? Quite a lot of time left, and uh, a two-man advantage. Just got to watch out for these two break tackle guys, uh, particularly the dodge one. That's not. That's absolutely fine. The orcs had uh, caged up in the middle, and uh, nothing really much happened. Um, and now he's pushed over the left hand side. Oh, double skulls. Doesn't matter, really. Break tackle, reposition. I mean there there you go, there you see the power of uh, the power of break tackle there. So this is risky, isn't it? Although although he's got although he's got forward. He 
it would it wouldn't have been hard to have got a two dice in the ball there really and uh, it's very hard to protect it against the skink swarm and uh, and the lizard's dodging but I mean he has Kazdasaurus here so uh, he's down even more players three man advantage this is a this is a good trade for him really black orc on the uh, on the crocs Wow, re-rolls the one dicer into a pow. Dirty Dino. Oh, but the movement six old old Lino catches it. Wow. He's in range. He could he could score here because there's only one turn left if he gets the pow. It didn't blitz him. I think I'd have blitzed him and gone for the gone for the score, to tell you the truth. Or was that a blitz? Are you just going to blitz with a carrier, is he? Hold for a pal. This doesn't have the blitz icon. Ah, going with a tackle blitz. Fair enough, he kind of needed the power on the, on the blitz. Yep, re-rolls it. But, I don't think... Ah, it's hard to re-roll once, because now you can't... Oh, the, yeah, the sidestep. He needed to... Uh, you really need to not make a double GFI there, didn't you? Oh, handoff though. That's that's a that's a cool little way of getting a bit forward. So he's got the break tackle in. Reroll because he wants to get the guard. He wants to get the guard in, doesn't he? And it doesn't. He doesn't get the guard in, he's going for the surf. Fair enough, 55% to make the dodge. Yeah, fair, fair enough. I mean, dodge Saurus. Pretty good. <laughs> I mean, he didn't really have much choice, did he? His alternative was, was to just not do anything. So I think that was a, that was a, fine, a fine desperation play. But, um, yeah, look, I don't think the orcs can score now, can they? This guy's in, this guy's in range. But it's going to need one, two, three, four, five, GFI. Oh, it's, it's, it's doable. Doable, clear him out with a push. Well, feels bad, man. So yeah, yeah, he had his chances, didn't he, Puppy? I mean, the, the, with a the man advantage towards the end there, uh, you've got to say it was well defended by uh, Hindus or Hindi, depending on <laughs> depending whether you go on the Blood Bowl too or or Twitch or whatever. Um, but yeah, I mean that was three fifty fifty dodges I was told by Puffy there but but still you know that that fifty five percent you can't get that mad you've got the you've got to plan around the fact that the Saurus can dodge once they've got dodge and I mean even if they don't have dodge they it, they can still do the play it's just a bit more risky isn't it you know you've got to uh you've got to you've got to uh play around that a little bit or at least you know yeah you just can't do anything about Saurus making five plus dodges they're gonna they're gonna <laughs> they're gonna go for it and if he's made three in a row, then it just means you've uh, you've got in a good spot, and they've had to try them, haven't they? You know. Um, but yeah, team got better. That's the important thing. MVP on a black orc, and uh, the Pommer leveled up. So you know, the it is what it is, isn't it? In a, in these progression, the the progression league is is what it is, isn't it? There, the tiered leagues. But there you go, a win for a win for Hindi, and uh, yeah, I mean he's he's definitely going to be. The team to beat this Lizardman team is, is outrageous. Um, he just needs to weather the storm of Mighty Blow and Claw Palm. So a great result there for Hindi, getting the win against the Orcs in a in a very close one. Uh, next up we've got my team, Team Fantastic Chaos, versus the coach's uh, Wood Elf team, the Tumbling Dice. And uh, this is uh, surprising. Right, so this is uh, this is my game. Um, against a coach 
he only has 11 wood elves he won the toss chose to kick um which which makes sense he has to defend with 11 players i mean he does have a strength four mighty blow strip ball dancer so he's got a really good chance to turn us over i've got no show hands on the team but of course i do get to carry my strength four guy um i decided to go for the try uh, block with the guard there try and get two dice on the tree so two chances to get him down with the uh, the blitz well no i can push him to there and then i could blitz him and then hit him again and stuff so i had i had a few, i had three chances to knock down the tree um two or three chances to knock down the tree got him minus a veed and then he appled it so turn one apple's gone against the kill chaos team um <laughs> not not ideal start for him um but yeah well we'll see what happened but um <laughs> I don't know, the team's, he's, he's got a really good dancer. I hit the guy without without dodge, roller pal, and kill him. <laughs> so, not the best, not the best turn one ever for uh, the coach there. And he actually bought a rookie catcher before this game, which I thought was a, a pretty bizarre decision, because I, if I was him, I would have gone with a loner. And uh, you know, just tried to keep the team alive in this game. But he, he went he went all out competitive to to win, whereas I pretty much did the opposite. <laughs> so here we are on turn five. And essentially I have murdered the shit out of him. Four cards, well five cards, because of the apple. And this really is the crucial turn here. Um three dice the dancer with Corpon. Old Flat Fart already made a few cards this game. Got a pile on, haven't I? And get another Kaz. <laughs> so this is this is six Kaz in five turns, of course. Now, you know, here what I do is I double protect Flat Fart. Now probably I should have just protected with one of them. On neither, because I had to break AV with this foul. Um, he did. He had actually stripped the ball off the uh, warrior who had the ball, and it, it was caught by this beast man. That's why a beast man without block has got it. Um, so if he hadn't done that, I'd have been all right. Make the foul, absolute gym foul, double two. Um, don't even break the AV. So even one more assist, I would have broken the AV, and now I'm in trouble because although he's only got, <laughs> although he's only got five players in the pitch. Uh, quite easy to cancel the assist there. Leap for a one dice. With block and strip. So two plus to get the ball. Gets it. And it's in two tackle zones, but he's got edge five, so it doesn't even matter. And then no re-roll now, but um, he makes the two plus rolls, including the avoiding the interception. And he's won. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I felt um, I felt a little bit bad there. But I mean, you know, look, on another day, I would have fouled him with two more assists, and then he would have three assists fouled my uh, my guy and killed him. So, but I probably just needed one to defend him. To be fair, I probably did just need one to defend. So I could have got one more assist, and then I would have broken AV and won. But never mind. Maybe I could have handed off to a warrior as well. Like uh, he did strip the warrior, and then I I, moved, I could have moved it back onto the warrior. But I, you know, this guy was on three points, so I, I didn't didn't really mind having it on a defenseless guy when I had the opportunity to foul the dancer. But um, yeah, did not work out. Yeah. That that was just me playing stupidly because it was you know because of it being a tiered league. And because I was just concerned about my player dying, you know, at the end of the day, it only takes one one zero assist foul to kill a claw plummet, doesn't it? And uh, I just thought I just valued protecting him over winning the match. And you know, I still had a four. I still need to roll a five plus on two dice to break AV of the dancer anyway, you know. So it was more just playing super safe than crazily recklessly. Um, but as it happened. <laughs> it was pretty pretty punished. I don't know what the chances are for the five plus, but um, I was pretty still pretty likely to break AV without the assist. But 
looking back, I think one guy protecting him and one more assist would have would have been a more balanced choice. But yeah, I can't I can't really I can pressure him to get um to get another round of LOS blocks. <laughs> so that's what I focus on doing now. So I make another foul there and get a... <laughs> I make my second foul there and roll a, a double two on the armor and a double three on the injury. <laughs> now I'm not complaining, uh, you know, here it's just funny. Just funny that I, I was I, foul, I was really bad at fouling this game, uh, but you know obviously I've massacred his team, and I've got reserves, so there's no way I'm not going to foul to try and keep, keep you know get more of an advantage. Got loads of loads of players because I wanted to be able to you know protect my uh, protect my good players at all times. So an extra, I managed to at least get an extra round of LOS blocks out of it, and you know there's still a chance to win this two one. Um, he's only got six players at the moment. So, you know, three three removals here, and, uh, and there could be a chance at winning. I, I could have I actually tried the one-turner, seeing as he had a, a, a tight LOS. Um, but I don't really like trying more than six one-turners. Uh, it's so unlikely to work. But, this is a mind. But he didn't have the he didn't have any things, so I, I could have tried it. But I just thought, look, I've got I've got a claw mighty blow, and uh, piling on. So I was always just going to try three dice blocks and try to hurt things. Oh, there's there's another Kaz on the tree. Two blocks on the tree, two Kaz, and this time it's a nickel. So uh, yeah, it's a pretty much a dead tree, that isn't it? Second half now. So he does the one dice blitz. Um, which is fair enough. Maybe I should have had somebody back deep. Actually. Uh, I probably should have put a block guy on the wing as well. So that he couldn't get, you know, it wouldn't work in a two plus the blitz. And so you kind of look kind of unlucky. I haven't used his reroll there. And then he, he fails the GFI there, so you know he's made he's made quite a few. He did the pick up and the handoff and stuff, and he's dodged around. He's one dice blitz, but I mean I've got a great chance to surf the surf the ball here. Um, I could also hit him on three dice, but without without tackle. So I think a three dice surf is where it's at here. And wh while the dancer could probably go anywhere and get it. Um, could probably react better than I could to it. It did seem pretty good. And of course, roll a one on the first GFI. And I did need another I needed a second GFI to um to fill the gap because he's got sidestep, so I didn't risk the second GFI. For the surf. Which you know maybe I should have done, because it was more likely than getting a POW. But I thought, you know, you can only sidestep back. So I didn't hate that. But I really should have brought this character over to here to shut down and running backwards. That was a mistake. And then, of, of course, sure enough, the next GFI is a one. Uh, <laughs> and I thought that was kind of worth it. Maybe it wasn't worth it. But I thought it was. I was also going to GFI with him to here afterwards. He actually uses a reroll to get punched by flat fat, which is uh, controversial to say the least. <laughs> so I've got two dice in the ball here with a reroll, so decent decent chance of getting getting the ball back. Well, back, not really back, getting the ball off the dancer. I don't dare us the GFI now, so it's just an easy, easy blitz away and score from, isn't it? Probably 
probably should have put my strength four guy in there, but again, I wasn't really that concerned about winning as, you know, unfortunately, um, I was, I wanted to keep my guys alive and I didn't want to make a GFI with an armor eight guy, <laughs> you know, get punched by a mighty blow guy. It all seems a bit crap, doesn't it? When you can just play it, play it kind of safe. Um, So the kill stays out, so he's got four players. And unsurprisingly, they do not they do not uh, provide much of much resistance. But and you know I could have tried to get score quickly here, and then turn him over and score again. I guess I could have done if I'd scored in two or three. There was well there was well enough time actually to score in two or three. But I've got no sure hands. Oh, <laughs> he gets a blitz that doesn't really do a lot. Um, I've got no sure hands. Well, I guess I should have tried, shouldn't I? I guess I should have tried to to, to score here because I could have got a draw. But then, what what good does a draw do me really? Not that much. Whereas getting three dice with mighty blow, I might make some cars, and uh, you know, probably more likely to get more star player points by uh, just getting three dice blocks in. So I don't, I don't hit, and I couldn't win, I don't think. I would have to score in two, then turn him over in two, then turn him over in two. So, really unlikely to, to get the win. But I guess I should have tried. Yeah. So, I you go. So I finally picked up the ball in turn 15. We've got eight guys over there, two guys over the other side. Absolutely murdered. Murdered the Wood Elf team completely. And got a got a touchdown on a warrior, so it wasn't a bad game for development. For me, it was a great game for development, and it was a terrible game for development for him. Uh, losing his tree, well, getting his tree niggled, seven cars altogether. Um, you know, he got he actually got less SPP. <laughs> he nearly got less SPP than Flatfoot got by himself. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, you know, obviously it sucks to lose. I I do hate losing, um, but. You know, it is it is what it is, isn't it? At the end of the day, no one died and and got some star player points and I guess that's the important thing. Well, there you go. I wish I'd, uh, I wish I'd broken the armor on that war dancer. Next up, we have Razta's Chaos. Um, Revenge of Power Up, facing off against Muppetillo's necromantic team, Skyriders CBB. All right, quick snap. So, um, Muppetillo won the coin toss and chose to receive. And he has he has the block, the block claw palm werewolf, a rookie werewolf, and uh, oh, it's really hard to see the skills when the quick snap's happening. <laughs> Tackle mighty blows fine actually, especially for this division, um, especially against this chaos team with loads of blodge. Well, I say loads, two blodges and a dodger. It's still loads compared to an average chaos team. Lots of agility. Um, it's interesting build, isn't it? In it's interesting. Uh, both with the reserve. Muppetillo has a bribe and the fame. Turn four from Muppetillo. The, what the, you know, there's a bit of manoeuvring, but now uh, Rasta has gone full contact here, trying to make something happen. So it'll be interesting to see how he deals with it. Yeah, I guess I guess there was a lot over there. Maybe he could have had one one more player over here, one back in the middle. They actually, yeah, he's pretty safe over the other side. There's been a lot of fouls made by Razda here. He's got two guys sent off, and uh, he's been a little bit beaten up with a couple of KOs there. A sending off for Muppetillo as well, but there's really been no problems on uh, on the Necro Drive. The, the removal on the edge for sure hands actually was pretty big and after that he never really got back in you know couldn't really get much pressure on the ball and uh, pretty pretty easy score from Patillo by the looks of it in fact he's completely abandoning defense to foul to foul the wolf and now you see now when this is happening the play in my game doesn't look so bad does it <laughs> There you go. 
<laughs> that really does make that really does make the play in my game look a lot better. <laughs> Completely abandoned defense. Uh, he, he had a small chance to stop the score. I mean, it is a little bit different because he had a really great chance to sack the ball if I failed them. But you see, I mean, look, you've got to imagine if I made, if I took my guys and I made the foul, then I think I would have been fouled. You know, if I'd broken AV on the foul, I think I would have been fouled. So I still do think my play was right one anyway, actually. Actually. But anyway, good, good drive there. And Patillo, uh, though he does get a, the touchdown on the ghoul, and he really wants them on his uh, on his rookie wolf, doesn't he? Is what he wants the SPPs on. He hasn't got any on them. On him. All right, so second half, ten versus nine. The chaos actually have the men advantage. Oh, that's a brutal kick, though. Absolutely brutal kick. Yeah, the kills came back, but he's he's only down two players from fouling. Uh, this this Corp on Wolf has stayed out the whole game since that since that foul, so it worked out to be a very good foul. I think I would have wanted more guys over here to stop him getting pressure on the ball. Oh, he's just going for the pass this turn. That's why he brought him down. All right, fair enough. I would have had him as an option to hand off to next turn. I would have like had him here because I could just run back and hand it off to him. But. That's fair enough. Gets more SPPs as well, doesn't it? Add four passing to add four. <laughs> okay, so another pass here. He's been doing lots of passes between these two HP4 guys. And on on turn 11, he's managed to get... Um, up to halfway. But he's left a pretty easy one dice blitz on the ball could make it two dice if you wanted to uh, chance a one dice block here could cancel the assist, one dice block there, dodge out to, to make it a two dice block that's exactly what he does and he just goes for the one dice blitz I'm not sure about the one dice blitz on the ball. Um, <laughs> he rolls into a board down. I really don't like it without block. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I like going for it. Wow, double skull. I think powers the the, the blotch step. Perfect. He's got to he's got to not be so lax as in and get up and make this one. Work. Maybe he thinks he could go for the win now. Seems really dodgy though, doesn't it? I think he's just got to stall it out at this point. Wow, well, greed re-roll. He must be stalling out if he's greed re-rolling. I've honestly forgotten the score of this game. <laughs> wow. Wow, that is... <laughs> I don't agree with greed re-rolling if you're going for the early score there, to be honest. But... There you go, 1-1. One, one. He's obviously optimistic. Optimistic going for the going for the 2-1, but uh, I think I would have kept the 1-1 one, one there. And Corp on Wolf's back. Now the Chaos have got nine players. And the Necro have got nine, so they don't even have a player advantage. And, uh, yeah, the Necro have got two two ghouls and two wolves so they're, they're not really if they were down a lot more agility three they're down one agility three if they were missing a lot more agility three and had like you know if if they were if they'd had three non-zombies off the pitch then fair enough but the fact that they're only missing one one non-zombie i think this is a bit bit uh a bit too optimistic scoring that thing so he's, uh, Muppetillo's got forward here with a couple of scoring threats, but he has left a, an easy route through the ball here. Dead. <laughs> a dead zombie regens. So he's got two dice in the ball, but he, he is blodge, so... 
gets the pow. No EV break. But uh, he's got the Edge 4. Edge 4 shoe hands recovery. Handing off. <laughs> um, Alright, so he fails the handoff. And also he's out of rerolls now, thanks to that, that thanks to that greed reroll. I think maybe he should have moved safe moves first if he was gonna do the handoff. One, two, three, four, five, six. He could have got him through, couldn't he? He fails the show hands pick up. Oh wow, the edge four. The edge four can run away. <laughs> or maybe pass it to the other edge four. That's probably the play now. I bet he wishes he'd kept that reroll there. Eh? This edge four could have just come down over here. Um and had it passed to him. Yeah, I think just running out like this is... Uh, I guess the punt's alright, isn't it? Yeah, the punt's okay. Oh, ho, ho. and the ghoul dashing back to get the ball after the punt uses, uh, uses a reroll to not fall on his ass. And uh, yeah, it's looking like 1-1, one, one, isn't it? Last turn for the chaos. Rolls a, rolls a double skull. If only he'd kept that reroll there. Eh? Right, what does he need to do here? Pass it to him and then he can hand off to the wolf. Actually, decent odds this, isn't it, with a reroll? Last turn. Last turn moves it nearly the whole length of the pitch. <laughs> to steal the win on turn 16. Unbelievable, Jeff. And most importantly for him, gets a, gets a touchdown on his wolf, doesn't he? And said wolf gets the MVP, so... That's, it's so important to, to skill up your rookie walls, and uh, that's a great result from Upatillo there. Uh, wins the game and and gets levels. I don't think there were any any uh, serious injuries on either side, so uh, regen was was on point. Lots of star player points. Um, there you go. So there you go. What a finish to that match, eh? And uh, now we have Keji Ruse's Necromantic team. Versus Thanos's Chaos Dwarves. Nothing, nothing too exciting from the kickoff there. Um, Keji Ruse won the kickoff and chose to kick. Um, Thanos has a wizard. And a bay. He's down a bit of TV there. Um, teams wise, there's a claw on wolf again. <laughs> With jump up. Um, Quite a lot of guard on the on the chorf team. A strength four, two str two strength four chorfs, isn't it? On this team, yeah, two strength four chorfs, a claw mighty, a blood shoe hands. So he's he's got he's got all the tools. His bulls are crap, though, aren't they? Yeah, that's it. His bulls, his bulls are crap, and um, that's his problem. <laughs> he's got bad bulls, but and three reserves for Keji. And only one for Thanos. So after after five turns of not doing a whole lot, he's still at the halfway line. Um, Kazda Kazda flesh golem there. KO'd a zombie. Had a bull KO'd. Um, Keji Ruse is coming in with an uphill on the ball here. That seems uh, outrageous, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course gets the double pal. <laughs> Disgusting. Um I had tackle, but still that's uh that was a bold play, wasn't it? Very bold play. And now uh now all of the dwarves are marked the the whole dwarf team is marked up. And it's gonna be very hard to get the score now, isn't it, with only three turns left. So yeah, turn eight. His his bull's been stranded there all all half. 
on a on a zombie. I mean, maybe he could have tried to free him up earlier, but that's the problem, isn't it, with crap balls? That you know, if he had a break tackle ball, he'd have been in the mixer doing stuff. But um, yeah, the drive just fizzled out after that uphill power. Uh, neither side really could do could get the ball and make a break. I guess the rain didn't help. Uh, so you know, at least at least the chaffs have survived. You know, they are down 200 TV. And against a claw pommer as well. So now they're gonna have the they're gonna have the wizard and the rain to try and do something. In the second half. So cheering fans, another reroll for uh, Keji. And uh, horribly unlucky for Thanos here, both KO rolls failing. They're both failing twice, even though he's only a rookie. So he's down to ten players on defense. Um, against 11 of the Necro, but the Necro have lost quality of players because they're although they've still got 11 on the pitch they've got a zombie instead of a flesh golem and a zombie instead of a tackle guard mighty blow white so they are they are down on quality a little bit fails to pick up a gain there and he fireballs only gets one knockdown on the fireball, that was, that was actually a really nice fireball wasn't it with the uh, the bull able to be freed with a block here, um, he could have got lucky and got a few knockdowns there, and that would have been a really good place to steal for the sure hands guy. That was that was I, I quite like that fireball there, yeah for sure. No, I'm not sure about just basing it like this. But... Oh, and not freeing up the ball. No, I would have, I would have uh, two deed with the claw, the claw mighty blow, blitzed with the ball, and then uh, blitzed him and based there, and then gone for the full plus pickle probably. Tried to get away. Yeah, you could. The claw mighty on the on the pom wolf was was very tempting. I I would have been hard pressed not to do that. Um, <laughs> that's very good. Just a badly hurt. But um, yeah, I think I think that's an absolutely fair thing to do. I think maybe you could have done something different. You know, just just trying to win the game at all costs. But I think the claw mighty on the wolf is what I would have done in this situation for sure. Huge one dice block into removal there. And a two dice blitz. Five plus pickup. Oh, he makes it. <gasps> and the three plus dodge. Oh, he's got the cubes going for him here, hasn't he? That was, uh, <laughs> that was pretty huge. <laughs> pretty huge. Stunning the show hands as well. Huge turn for the necro there. Yeah, re rolls, but no dice. That's unlucky, isn't it, eh? Four dice with no only block protecting him. Wouldn't it matter? He wouldn't have even knocked over a defenseless player there. Three pushes and a skull. Got to be. It's a bit risky as well. Now he's left a bit in behind, but I guess there's no agility three players to threaten. Oh, but yes, there is. Ooh. Ball can reach, can he? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, he can. That's a bit bit lax there from Keji Roos. He should have he should have counted them squares out. And seen that it was nine. No, it didn't even blitz with him. Well, aren't I fucking confused? He must have misclicked. Surely, surely that was a misclick there. <laughs> because he should have just blitzed him, shouldn't he? Oh man, one, 
dice. One dice, Pals of Doom here from the Necro. I'm not sure I like irrelevant blocks when you've got a ball hit that you really want to work. <laughs> uh, but again, it's Rebel, you know, there's, it's a, it's a multi-tiered uh, progression league, so, you know, it's not like, it's not like it's a final, if it was the playoffs, I would have liked those moves a lot less, but I guess when it's not the playoffs, it's not such a big deal. This this wolf is leading a charmed life, isn't he? Unbelievable. I think I'm gonna re-roll that that hit on the ball though, because he's a three plus away from just scoring, isn't he? Well, not anymore. Not after not after the five plus dodge. <laughs> re-roll the five plus dodge, but not the two dice on the ball. Interesting. I would have uh, I would have definitely re-rolled the the ball hit, or he could have moved the uh, could have moved the ball first, couldn't he? Fails the dodge, so that's probably all she wrote. Three, four, five, GFI. Yeah, I don't think he can score. I say I don't think. I know he can't score. <laughs> um, and it's hard for the 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 bull's gonna have to run, isn't he? So I guess you just do the handoff to him straight away. No rerolls. So just do the handoff to the bull, and then run. And he's got him as a backup scoring threat. Yeah, you could have moved him forward first as a backup scoring threat. And then I think just going for the handoff straight away is maybe better. He could have GFI'd twice last turn. He should have probably GFI'd twice. Four GFIs or five plus handoff. I think the four GFIs are more likely. So yeah, he probably should have GFI here to the Forget what I was saying about you should have handed off to him last turn. What you should have done was uh, GFI twice for the. I've got one. He's in the end zone. You're telling me there's a chance? Oh, he, he makes the lesser percentage play of the uh, 4 plus pass. He could have GFI'd 3 plus pass, but again. If you don't GFI, um, you can't die. So that was a fair thing to do. MVP on the bull, so he levels a bull without even trying. And MVP on the wolf, so he levels the wolf as well. So they'll both be happy with where the MVP fell. Again, no permanent injuries, I don't believe. And uh, not a lot of SPPs, though. Nil-nil. Nil-nil thriller. <laughs> well, I'm sad to say that Thanos dropped out of the league after that game. Um, good news for everyone else though, because they get a they get a bye week, but uh, it sucks for Kedgy a bit. And next up, we've got Grendrake's lizards, lizards from Dimension X, lizard man team, versus Buford T Justice's heroes of uh, of my division last season. Nearly went, nearly got a hundred percent record with his undead team, Crematorium Crew. But uh, I think he's going to have a tougher test this season. Brilliant coaching, so an extra reroll to the higher TV team. Grand Drake's Lizards from Dimension X. Buford T. Justice's unbelievable crematorium crew. Amazing record in the first season. Nearly won every single game. Um, he's, he's down TV, got a wizard. And yeah, already, like, his team isn't bad. But already, Undead are at the point where I think they're starting to just fall away a little bit. Um, you know, because obviously they're, they're streets ahead early on. Low TV, season one. They're, they're you know they're, they're so much better than like uh, chaos and stuff. Uh, <laughs> chaos and uh, you know a lot of like maybe it's dark elves teams like that. They're a lot better than season one. Lizards are the same as well. Lizards are completely amazed, completely smashed teams like orcs season one. And to be fair, I think lizards get are still good in season two. It probably takes lizards a little bit longer to fizzle out because. Once, you know, Lizard's getting all this block and guard, makes them a lot more powerful. But it, eventually they get overtaken by the Chaos and the Elves. Whereas already the, uh, I mean, this is this is a good undead team. Though. Don't get me wrong, this is a good undead team. Jump up, Pommer, Agefall, Ghoul. Um, 
but they're already starting to drop off a little bit. Right, so turn two, Grand Drake pushed really hard on the right side, and Buford T just as uses Wizard. I, I, I'm not sure about the Wizard, to be honest. Um, if this guy goes down, he gets a hit on the ball. Um, if this guy goes down, he gets it. If the, you know, it, but he needs this one to go down to get the hit on the ball. It doesn't matter if all three of these go down. So I'm not, I'm not sure about that. And the hit on the ball, hmm. I th he, he timed his wizard perfectly against me um, when we played the previous season, but I'm not sure about that wizard. That might have been a little bit early. I didn't, I didn't like that wizard. But I mean, maybe he thinks he's got the payoff of like sticking. Sticking him at the sideline. This mummy can. Maybe he's GFI. In fact, he hasn't moved him yet. Maybe the mummy's going to GFI to try and occupy the crocs. Maybe he thought it was worth it. The incremental positional advantage, maybe he thought was worth it, but um, I would have rather saved it, I think. Oh, he's just moving back with the, with the, undead, with the undead, the mummy. GFIing. And another upskirt. Cyanide are famous for them. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's even put a lot of pressure on either, has he? he used his wizard. Could get his uh, could get his mummy surfed here. <laughs> um, it wouldn't have been the craziest thing in the world. Handing off. Is he just going to score? That's uh, bold, isn't it? He's out of range, though. He can only be based. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really like this from Grendry. I think he's setting himself up to get 2 1 grinded here. Um, you know, as long as, as, long as Buford T Justice kind of plays this safe, which he has done by having the edge fall guy there. Just stand him up. Oh, he's JFI'd again. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think you. I don't think he needs to base. I mean, okay, it's it's kind of standard to make the two JFI's there, but I don't think he had to base. Um, I think as long as he makes it so he can't stall another turn, then he should be able to one grind him, shouldn't he? Oh, he does. So. Yeah, early score. So this is uh, that's interesting, isn't it? That would, I'm not sure about that. Like, I I quite like the going going hard over in one side to protect against the wizard and maybe draw it out. But uh, I'm not sure. I like the early. I mean, look, wizards are great on defense. He does have the movement the movement nine sprinter as well for one turn. Uh, but. He's given he's given the undead the chance to two one grind him, hasn't he? Still got four rerolls. Yeah. But yeah, li lizards are so good. Lizards are so good on defense that it's not it's not bad to sc not bad to score early, really, is it? Um, but like he's only got the one break tackler and. He does have an agility four sure hand, blocks your handers. Like you know, if he if this was a rookie ghoul, then scoring early makes a lot more sense, doesn't it? Uh, it's not easy to uh, get the ball off him. Like, you know, he's swarm with skinks or whatever. Oh wow, he's caught it! <laughs> he's caught it on a zombie. <laughs> scoring as early is good for the SPP farm, yes, and it's not all about winning this league. That's very true. So yeah. Sure, he's going to hand off to the goal here. I don't like standing so close. That uh, this, is, this is a mistake. I think it's a mistake, and I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to say that it's a mistake. I think it's a mistake to cage near the LOS against lizards because you're just inviting them crashing into the front of the cage. You know, dissolving your 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 LOS, completely dominating you with their strength and basing the ball and just you know I just I think now obviously if you stay away from the LOS then the skins can swarm you in the backfield. But if you've got some tackle guys, or some mighty blow guys, that's not so scary, is it? Um, I just don't like inviting 
that much pressure on the front of the cage like this. Oh, double skull. So now he doesn't have a re-roll. He's got to dodge out the uh, ghoul now, hasn't he? And he doesn't, he blocks. It, so instead he makes a different one in 36 block. Uh, uh, so that, that's better, actually. He didn't have to dodge out at all. So that's really unlucky, isn't it? Two one in 36 blocks there. Um, but yeah, maybe he should have made that one first day. <laughs> you know, without being too critical, maybe when the ball is based by a strength ball mighty blow guy, maybe he should make that block first. Um, gets the pal. Could be a defensive touchdown here, couldn't it? The only problem is they're a agility three, but he's swarming hard. I wouldn't hate fouling, fouling this guy because agility four he can dodge through and pick up in tackle zones and stuff. Mm. Sure enough, make one dodge with a skin can fail it. He would have failed if he's agility four. To be fair. Oh man, he really wanted the push, didn't he? There, but he still got dodge. Pickup fails. So now, um, the lizards actually based up quite well, the Saurus. So it's not going to be easy for them to clear both tackle zones, but they could clear one tackle zone pretty easily. Well, they, could, they could clear both if, if, they, uh, if they were as good as me. <laughs> 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 Only joking, but there, there was a way they could have they could have freed both tackle zones. But I, he goes for the ball bands, which is fair enough. Likely to only be in one tackle zone. Yep, and he's got show hands free. Still hasn't used a reroll this half, I don't think. That's unbelievable, isn't it? So yeah, show hands pick up. Maybe he could have tried to have this guy in the way, move him last, pick up and go there and like make some kind of a screen for him, double GFI or, you know, bring him in front because as it is, it's just an easy two plus away to, um, to two dice him with block, isn't it? He's got a bit of a chance. He doesn't, except he hasn't got. A, oh, he's got to get this. Uh, this white forward as a, as a scoring threat. Oh no, this ghoul. He's got the ghoul and the white as possibles. White double skulls again. Oh my god. <laughs> well, now he doesn't have any possibles. Yeah, and he couldn't. He couldn't get the the ghoul forward without rolling down. So he had to make that block there. He just needed a push, and then the ghoul would have been up. I'd say bad dice for Buford T Justice so far. For sure. He gets uh, two dice in the ball here, doesn't he? And then, if he gets the pow, he might use a reroll here. <laughs> if he gets the pow, he can. He's got a chance of two now. Oh, double skull. Once again, irrelevant blocks before the crucial actions, but it's 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 absolutely fair enough in a in an eternal league like this. Results aren't the most important thing, are they? So. Doesn't get the power. Alright, second half. Um, so it's still 11 versus 11, but it is 5 Skinks and 6 Aurus, so this drive likely to be more comfortable for for the Necros. Not they're not Necros, they're undead. <laughs> this drive likely to be more comfortable for the undead, especially as he hasn't been able to cage behind the LOS straight away, which I really, really don't like. KO, huge. Thought that said Great and Nubla being too much Jurassic Park for me. 
Oh, two kills, absolutely huge. This should be an easy, easy drive now, shouldn't it? Only four Saurus. Now, now the close cage wouldn't be so bad because he, he just can't put the pressure on like he could the first time. And he's you're actually more weaker against Skinks now that you've got the Saurus down a bit. So Grendrake didn't do the backfield swarm with Skinks. Uh, he just sat in front and then eventually Buford T just has gone forward a little bit here and he's he's gonna find himself a bit tricky situation here. Tackle Saurus can GFI the base. Oh. oh, he blitz in fact. All right, but he doesn't get it. Oh, that's a little bit unlucky, isn't it? A little bit unlucky. A touch unlucky, not not too bad because you know he's still got block. Wow, so he actually had two dice on the ball there. Thanks to that chain push, that was pretty good. So uh, there was a bit of running around. Oh my god! And there's a break tackle. All these players out for the lizard men, and uh, he gets two dice on the ball and gets the power. Wow. <laughs> Ball in the crowd, stunned ghoul. Oh, and he catches it. Oh, that's outrageous. That's outrageous. That's outrageous on both sides, really. He should not have let him get the hit. The hit off. And then for him to get the hit, get the pal, get the stun. And then for it to go in there with a throw. That's that's pretty unlucky. I mean, you have to say, uh, Grand Drake defended well with, without down so many players. Uh, really gave himself a chance to stop it, but at the end, I guess the removals, the removals were telling, weren't they? And that scatter, unbelievable. There is a chance of the one turn now, isn't there, with the uh, with the MA skink? Two tackle zones here. Um, you should probably just go straight for the handoff. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. GFI handoff. Probably should have gone straight for the handoff. Um, didn't have any rerolls though, and got the pal. <laughs> so that's it. No, no one turn. Um, so yeah, that was it. Uh, a close one. One one fifty blocks to forty six. Lots of blocks. Those KOs in the second half. It still didn't make it make it safe. That's how good lizards are. <laughs> Eighteen percent ball possession. Still nearly won. And uh, again, no no permanent injuries and a decent share of SPPs. Not bad. Wow. How about that scattering throwing? Eh. So now we have a uh, skulls dwarf team. 16 turns of headache versus Holy Boys Lizard Men who have got a lot of a lot of people missing the game. Ready Lizard One. Let's go straight into that. Oh, kick off return. A blitz, wow. So um, the dwarves won the toss and choose to receive skulls. Um, oh, and there, there are skulls. <laughs> Into board downs. Uh, School the dwarf coach <laughs> won the kind toss. Chose to receive a blizzard. Um, Holy boy's team were down two saurus, so he got two journeymen, and then he's got a merc, a mercenary saurus. I think that's a good play. It gives him a bench, and it means he's not so horrifically exposing his skinks, because uh, with only with only four saurus against dwarves who can get tackle on you, it's pretty bad, isn't it? So. Quite like that play of, of the of Merksaurus, but um, it's pretty scary. All this guard and mighty blow, and just not being able to protect the skinks very well due to lack of Saurus. 
So turn four for the uh, lizards now. And both sides have played pretty conservatively. The dwarves have removed a couple of saurus and the croxigo. Um, I really thought Holy Boy would have put more pressure on. He had he had chances too, but chose to kind of play it safe. I guess he's he's kind of scared of giving up the pom hits on his saurus, which is fair enough. Dwarves are at the end zone there. Four KOs now, <laughs> piling up. Kaz on the rookie on the rookie on the loner skink so. Normal shed a tear for him. No damage on the dwarves. Just ru running away with his edge five in the corner. <laughs> I would have considered not playing him uh, on defense with him having the reserve. <laughs> I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have hated benching him completely. Surely there was a way to get. To get the follow up, mighty blow hit. Doesn't matter anyway. He's got, oh, he's got tackle on him, so. 1 0 for the dwarves at half time. Four out of four KOs come back. That's that's pretty that's pretty lucky, isn't it? Eleven players for the second half. Only down only down a loner a loner skink, which is no problem at all. So wow, that's pretty 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 huge dice for Holy Boy there. It gives him a chance at the one one, for sure. Alright, so the blizzard's gone. Wow. Turn 11, Holy Boy has, has managed to split his own team in a Saurus on one side, Skinks on the other. And, you know, ideally you want the, the Saurus in front and then the Skinks in the second line. And you really don't want this against Dwarves where they've got Tackle on you. Now they've only got Tackle on three of the four, but still, that's. Oh no, they've got on all four, the Blitz has got Tackle as well. Having all four Skinks based by Tackle, apart from the Ball Carrier, that's. Uh, that's not good, is it? I mean, he does have this edge five on the ball still safe, but it's not it's not pleasant to be in this situation here. There you go. It's not nice even if they don't have tackle, <laughs> because it's pretty easy to roll a one in nine um, and cas yourself <laughs> just just like that. <laughs> I don't think there's an easy don't think there's a hit on the ball but um, if his trolls lay out sprint you could get a so. and there's the other thing tackle makes it a knockdown and another Kaz running out of players and if he bases everybody up He's going to be struggling a bit. He does have the edge five, and the edge five is in scoring range. Maybe he'll just go ham and go for the score next turn. He might have to. We'll suppose. <laughs> I guess he doesn't want to score now after the reroll being done. Nice Kaz though. That, and that's why I wouldn't want to make that. Wouldn't want to make that bob because you end up with Armouret in contact, don't you? He goes for the score, and he's he's gone for it anyway. Oh, there was a guard behind as well. Ah, there was a guard behind. Fair enough. So it would have only been a one dice block there. But still, I would rather make that one dice block and skull it than roll a two on one on the dodge, maybe. I don't know. I, I guess he's going to go for the dodge and the two GFIs, wasn't he? When he gets a push. Goes for the three plus dodge out. And... I don't know, is it 2 plus dodge out? Oh, I was, I was being stupid there, I do apologise. It was a 2 plus dodge out. And not only did he fail, <laughs> he got his armour broken. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. He rolls a 1 as well! <laughs> wow. Well, I guess it's fair that both coaches rolled a 1. Uh, terrible, terrible dice on both sides. 
Oh, huge, huge KO. Oh, and what a beautiful scatter as well. That should be that should be game, shouldn't it? One 0 up for the dwarves, and now the bone in three tackle zones. No rerolls left for the lizard men. No. Uh, but yeah, he, he got off quite lightly actually um, from the game, Holy Boy. Not no perms, just uh, skinks hurt there, rookie skinks and uh, loner skinks. A, 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 a good man is foul on turn 16. Fair enough, isn't it? Nothing else to do. Maybe, maybe he could have tried to skill his guy up. Lona steals the MVP, but uh, 15 AV bricks to four. Not surprising, really, is it? That was a. He actually, he actually outblocked him, the Lizards. That was a bad game for the Lizards to be missing uh, missing two Saurus, really. Did quite well to nearly get the draw, didn't he? Um, not too many star player points on each side. And uh, the dice, I don't know if the dice are worth ever going into, really. Uh, I guess overall you can, you know, like, uh, I'm sure I'm sure Buford T Justice went over the amount of double skulls you'd have expected. And, like, overall I think it's hardly worth looking at, though he was. <laughs> In this case, Holy Boy rolled a lot of skulls, nearly as many skulls as pushes. And uh, I like to just count up, you know, powers plus power pushes skulls plus both downs and then compare them with the pushes because then they should be roughly the same shouldn't they so you're looking at uh 44 30 40 so he actually rolled more powers than he should have done uh but he definitely rolled you know an egregious number of skulls there um but you know it is what it is isn't it so a valiant attempt from holy boy there but that was that was a bad bad time to be down saurus and last but not least, we've got an absolute bash fest with the Meme Land Bashers, Chaos Dwarfs, coached by Ramhard, versus Wayne Farah's necromantic outfit, the Wolverine Race. Right. So both teams get an extra reroll, and it is <laughs> Ramhard has gotten he's got a wizard and the babe. And he's got a lot. He's got a rowdy team. He's got a lot of mighty blow. Some claw. This is the one necro team without without a claw pom wolf as well. Um, so this could be rowdy. I don't like a rookie blitz instead of a claw mighty blow blitz, but I'm sure he had his reasons. I guess just keep things compact against the frenzy. Yeah, it looks like he wants to stop, stop the wolf hit back, which is fair enough in it. You know, that's, that's the that's the weakness of wolves, isn't it? Strength three frenzy. Um, he might just blitz with the uh, strength four. White now. Yep. So turn four for Ramhard. He's uh, he's made a cas and three KOs, and the ball's been based a few times. It's been it's been pretty scary, but he's just made a cas there with a regen, and it's pretty safe, isn't it? Amazingly, when you when you tend when you remove the half of the other team, it tends to get easier. So there's been there's been a little bit dodgy, but overall. Um, he's kept the ball pretty safe. He just made a lot of removals. I'm not sure about all this fouling on our grind. I don't think he's got any reserves. No. <laughs> I think it was it was good when he had to to keep the uh, thing. No, oh, he just got on turn eight. For some reason, when I was skipping ahead, he would skipped it. But there you go. He scores on turn eight. So, you know, easy, easy half there. Loads of, loads of cars and KOs. Well, not really loads of cars. Loads of removals, loads of KOs. Um, regens. So there wasn't really loads of cars. But that additional foul there, I, I don't know. I think he had to foul when, when it was in contact with the ball. But 
He is down. It's a weakness of starting with 11 players, isn't it? For sure, especially if you want to foul. Got a dirty player guy, you really want to have. He is missing a ball for this game, isn't he? Um, but you really do want to have some reserves if you can foul like that, for sure. Wow. So, there's been a mistake with the, uh, with the Necro here, because the Wolf recovered, <laughs> and he hasn't put him on the pitch. <laughs> so, uh, bit of an oversight there, I assume. I don't think you would intentionally, intentionally not play a, a bludge tackle Wolf, especially when men, men up, they're only starting half of ten men. Um, looks like he's just not realised he's recovered and uh, left him off there. Bit of a cocker, but he's got his sure hands going. The thing is, I don't like carrying the, the problem. The problem for the Necro is here, is the wizard. Because you don't really want to carry with his sure hands go to get lightning bolted. But then there's no one else to carry it with. You don't want to get the mighty bow tackler lightning bolted. And you don't want to risk failing the pickup with a zombie. So, um tricky so turn 13 for Wayne Fair and it looks like the second half has gone for the Necro the way the first half went for the Chofs bunch of removals um, wizard a non-factor and just an easy drive protected men up and uh, looking like a standard 1-1 draw <laughs> Wolf. Wolf touchdown. Get that boy skilled up. Oh, there was still some damage from from Ramhard in the second half, actually. So I think I think the Necros will be happy to get out without any perms there. To be honest, it's a it's a pretty terrifying <laughs> Chorf team. Uh, Seventeen AV bricks, <laughs> leveled up a zombie, which is something I guess. Uh, it could be wrestle tackle or the <laughs> ultimate safety <laughs> movement for. <laughs> and uh, close to a level on him now. And yeah, forty eight bucks to forty two, but still made more. More cars and KO. So there you go, an absolute bash fest to finish, and a hard fought draw, and that that concludes all of the uh, week one matches. Let's have a look at the table. And as you can see, not not a lot yet. It's just starting to take shape. You can see, however, the huge TV of Hindi's lizard men team. I mean, he's definitely the favourite as far as I'm concerned. Um, and yeah, obviously, yeah, not not much has happened, but a lot of draws. You know, as you would expect, really, with uh, good coaches, with uh, you know kind of pretty even teams there's not a lot from the lowest tv the highest isn't isn't that much difference so that concludes the rebel roundup thanks for watching everybody if you enjoyed it don't forget to leave a like and subscribe catch us next time and stay fantastic